Hey guys, today we're going to sink into the mechanics for the Kitana Ravel. The very first creature that you encounter inside of this dungeon is a Ronkin Dreamer, and you will come across a few more of these throughout the rest of the dungeon. The Dreamers will cast an ability called Wrath of the Ronka, creating a tether to multiple of the owl statues in the room, which will also be accompanied with glowing eyes. Any of the statues that have glowing eyes will do a beam attack across the room from their location. You will also notice two large stones placed in the room. The way to avoid this beam attack is to place yourself between these large stones and an owl that does not currently have glowing eyes, quite literally putting yourself between a rock and a hard place. Wrath of the Ronka takes 5 seconds for these guys to cast, and once it's completed, they will cast the ability again after 10 seconds. The first boss inside of Kitana Revel is Lozato. Lozato is going to cast Stone Fist, which will be a single target tank buster. Just like the other tank busters that you've encountered during Shadowbringers, it is wise to mitigate through this ability. He will cast this every 45 seconds. He is then going to do Lozato's Scorn, which will light up the eyes on one of the statues in the room, and that statue will blast the entire half of the arena it is on. And then he is going to do Heat Up, which will shoot steam out of either his left or his right arm, and then he will follow that up with Lozato's Fury, slamming that arm on the ground, dealing damage to that entire half of the arena, stunning any players caught in it, dealing high damage, and applying vulnerability to you. Once the boss reaches 70% health, he is going to cast Heat Up again. After he casts Heat Up, he will do Lozato's Scorn, and then he will slam his arm with Lozato's Fury. If the boss does Lozato's Fury and slams his arm on the opposite side of the arena as the statue blasts its attack, this can cause problems for your group, leaving almost nowhere to stand safely. Lozato is going to repeat this one mechanic throughout the entire fight. Try and be sure to keep your entire group near the center of the arena so that no one gets trapped on the side that the statues blast on or gets stuck on the same side of Lozato's Fury. The second boss inside of this dungeon is the Bat Squatch. This boss will open up with his tank buster called Ripper Fang and follow it up with Soundwave being his room-wide AoE. He's then going to cast an ability called Subsonics. He will slam the ground causing shockwaves 12 times in a row. These slams don't deal very much damage, however they will drop rocks from the ceiling that will create AoEs on the ground. Two of these AoEs will result in tall stone pillars. Five seconds after Subsonics has finished, the boss will do his AoE sound wave again. When he finishes sound waves, these two pillars will shake and fall to the ground, dealing high damage to anyone caught underneath them and applying vulnerability. So make sure you're paying attention to where these pillars are falling and get out of the way. Five seconds after Soundwave has dropped the pillars, he will do his Tank Buster Ripper Fang again. And 10 seconds after he's done Ripper Fang, he will repeat the cycle of Subsonics, Soundwave, and Ripper Fang until he has died. The final boss inside this dungeon is the Light Warden Eros. This boss will have his own Tank Buster called Rind that hits incredibly hard. He will also have an ability called Hound Out of Heaven, where he will tether to one party member and shortly after charge at them dealing moderate to high damage. This ability will deal more damage the closer you are to him, so as soon as it is on you, run as far as you can away, and he will also do an ability called Glossolalia, which will be a room-wide AoE. At 85% health, he is going to cast an ability called Viper Poison, dropping 4 AoE puddles on the ground and 1 on a random player, creating 5 AoEs that need to be avoided. He will then jump to one side of the arena, cast Inhale, pulling everyone to him, and then casting Heaving Breath, pushing everyone to the opposite side of the arena. It's important to orchestrate yourself so that once you're pushed by Heaving Breath, you are not sliding through Poison Puddles or into one directly. 5 seconds after Heaving Breath, he will do Rind on the tank, and 20 seconds after, he will do Hound Out of Heaven, which will be his Tether Charge. He will repeat the Viper Poison, Inhale, and Heaving Breath mechanic every 20% after this, meaning it will be at 65, 45, 25, and 5% health. He will also do an ability called Confessions of Faith once he reaches 70% health. This ability will have two forms. The first one will be a stack mechanic, causing your entire group to come together. He will also have his two outer heads charging up a lightning based attack. Your group needs to stack in the center of the arena to absorb the attack together and to avoid the lightning blasts on the outside edges. He will do Confessions of Faith again at 50%, 30%, and 10% health and they will alternate between the stack mechanic and then marking each player with their own individual AoEs causing you to spread out and accompanying this phase with a fire breath mechanic covering the center of the arena, inverting what your party must do on each of these phases. You will want to sit in the center of the arena for the lightning attack that comes at 70 and 30% health and then you will want to spread to the outside edges of the arena when he does it at 50% and 10% health. Anytime this boss does Confessions of Faith at 50% or lower, he will follow it up by doing Glossalia's AoE twice in a row, Hound Out of Heaven, and then Rent back to back. 
Between the chain coming after Confessions of Faith and the chain of abilities coming after Viper's Poison, this fight is very chaotic. However, it does have a pattern to it, so it's sort of like doing a dance. A dance of death. Well guys, there you go. That's your quick guide for the Kitana Ravel. If you are interested in seeing more guides for the Shadowbringers dungeons, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.